Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Progress. If you want to progress at chess, you'll have to study tactics, end games, the classics from the past and the present, and analyze your own games. This is the second installment of the classics. And I will show you a game from Garry Kasparov, not Grandmaster Garry Kasparov, but 14-year-old 14 14-year-old 14 Garry Kasparov. He played a training match in Baku in the Soviet Union, which is now Azerbaijan. He played against Elmar Magadamov, who was a white player. He turned out, he was a 19 year old and turned out to become a grandmaster as well as Kasparov. And also was Kasparov's second in his first match for the World Championship in 1984 against Karpov. That's the white player and the black player is Garry Kasparov, 14 years old. On the picture he's 11 years old, I could not find a picture where he's 14. And let's have a look at the game. Magaramov opens knight f3, knight f6, d4, e6, c4, d5, knight c3, we have a queen's gambit declined. Bishop e7, Bishop g5, Kasparov castled, e3, h6, kicking the bishop, bishop went to h4, and we are in a variation with a very complicated name, it will has to be named after three different chess players, it's the Tartakovera Makagonov Bondarevsky variation of the Queen's Gambit, that's a mouthful indeed b6 from Kasparov, queen b3, bishop b7, and now that the bishop has gone to b7, white decides to take on f6, bishop takes back and take in the center, e takes d5, rook d1, and here rook e8 is the main move, but Kasparov plays more actively, he pushes the C pawn, C5. This was taken by Magaramov, D takes C5, and you cannot take back now. You can't take the pawn back because the bishop on B7 is unprotected. So the move here is Knight D7. Now White can win a pawn by taking on B6, that is playable, but Magaramov did not want to give black too much activity, which would be the result of winning the pawn, and he played c6, forcing Kasparov to take with the bishop, and then knight d4. Instead of knight d4, Magaramov could have taken on d5, that pawn is attacked twice and only defended by the bishop, but again Magaramov decided against that, it would open up the diagonal for the bishop on c6, and he did not want to give Jan Kasparov too much activity. I guess Kasparov was already renowned for his strong play when he has the initiative. So knight e4, bishop takes, rook takes, and knight c5 attacking the queen. Queen went back to d1, and knight e6 attacking the rook, and the rook went back to d2. And let's stop for a moment. I'm going to quote now from the book Chess Strategy for Club Players from the Dutch international master Herman Groten. He says at this position, At first sight, white is not doing so bad. Black has an isolated pawn on d5 that needs support, and besides, the black pieces do not seem to radiate much activity. But this is a very static way of looking at the position. The dynamic factors speak in black's favor. In particular, there's the fact that the white king is still in the middle and he also still has to develop his bishop. These factors turn out to be of overriding importance. Kasparov does not hesitate to make a promising pawn sacrifice. So Magaramov could have won a pawn on several occasions before. He didn't take it to stop his opponent from getting a lot of activity, 
but he cannot escape this pawn sacrifice d4. Magaramov took and rook e8. Now Magaramov played a very inventive move. Of course there is a threat of the knight playing and then the rook will give check to the king. So you would expect something like bishop e2 to at least block that line. But Magaramov allows the discovered attack. He plays f3. And let's again look what Herman Groten says about this move. Playing f3, white is not afraid of a discovered check by the knight and neither does he fear queen h4 check, g3, queen f6, king f2, after which he will be more or less okay. But he is in for a nasty surprise. And the nasty surprise came with a peace sacrifice from Jon Kasparov. Bishop takes f3. And again I'm quoting from the book. An unexpected and quite unusual peace sacrifice. The attacker by force removes a piece from the protective cordon around the enemy king, making it possible for the remaining pieces to attack the king. The hiding place on f2 that white had in mind becomes extremely drafty after the text move. The following moves are more or less forced. Let's have a look at what followed. Magaramov took. Queen h4 check. The rook has to block. If the king goes to e2 there is suddenly knight f4 checkmate. So rook f2 is the only move. Knight takes d4. Check. Discover, the, discover check from the rook on e8. Bishop e2. Knight takes f3. King f1 is the only move. Queen h3 check. And now rook g2 is the only move. And here Kasparov should have brought another piece into the attack with rook a d8. But he decided on knight h4, which is also good, but not the best move in the position. Rook h g1, protecting the rook on g2. And now rook a d8. And here the only move for white to continue would have been queen a4. But also then black is winning. I won't show you that variation. But Magaramov played queen e1. His queen was attacked so he had to play the queen and he went to e1. Rook d3 from Kasparov. Queen f2. And knight f3. This is a very pretty picture. Look at all those pieces in that little square there at the bottom right hand side of the board. And now white is in a positional zugzwang. He hardly can move anything. He cannot move the bishop, he cannot take on d3 because of knight takes h2 checkmate. He cannot play for example knight d5 because then there is rook d1 check. Bishop takes and again knight takes h2 checkmate. If he plays for example queen g3 then he loses as follows. Knight d2 check. King e1. Rook takes queen. Rook takes g3. And now the nice maneuver. Knight f3 check. King f2. Knight takes g1. White has to take the queen. And the knight takes the rook back. And black is an exchange. And two pawns up. And wins easily. So what to do? White played rook h1. Rook d3. Rook back to g1. White still can't do anything. And to show how powerless white is, Kasparov played king h8 here. Just to make sure that if there's ever a rook takes g7 possible, then it's not check. Rook back to h1. And now the very nice and instructive b5. 
Here Magaramov could not look at the position any longer and he resigned. What's the idea behind b5? Well you cannot take that pawn because then there is rook takes e2, queen takes, rook takes, king takes and queen takes g2 and you also lose the rook on h1 and black wins easily. The threat of b5 is to push the pawn on to b4, to kick the knight away, and if the knight no longer protects the e2 square then we get that same variation. So for example we play a3 with white to stop b4, then there is a5 renewing the b4 threat. For example, just to show you the variation, rook g1 again, then b4, a takes, a takes, and now the knight has to move to avoid losing that piece. For example, knight e1, and we get the same as we already saw. Rook takes, queen takes, rook takes, king takes, and now the quickest way to win is knight takes g1, and if you take that knight back, there's queen takes h2, and black is too much material up to continue the game for white. Very impressive from 14 year old Gary Kasparov. Hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Progress channel. And I'm looking forward to seeing your comments. You also may want to look at my other channel, Chess to Impress. There's a lot of material there as well. This is Chess to Progress. This is Rick. Thank you for watching.